Okay, everyone. So welcome, welcome to this webinar. And I'm super, super excited about this. I'm excited about this month. I'm excited about this full moon uh, that is ahead of us. And there's a few very powerful things happening in the month of March. So I'll be talking about some of the themes for this month and at the same time or with with the themes of the month of March I'm going to be talking about this full moon that is happening uh, tomorrow which is um, it's a very important full moon and it's going to set up the tone for the rest of the month and for for April as well the way I see it and I can't believe that it's already March, that the year is flying by so quickly already. And we've gone through quite a lot just in the first couple of months of 2017. And I said it at the beginning of the year that like, whatever we, we experienced in January was a preview <laughs> of what this year is, is going to be about, 2017. It's a big year. It's an exciting year. And it's also a year of exciting, in a sense, of kind of like a roller coaster ride of lots of ups and lots of downs, lots of big happenings, and then lots of feeling of, of stopping. But within all that, there's a big momentum of forward movement. And the themes that I picked for this month are, as you can see on the screen, new beginnings, definitely. And I'll be talking about each and every one of them. <clears throat> new beginnings, slow and steady, quality over quantity, and rela relationship to self. So one of the biggest things that we are looking at right now and how it's all connected to the themes that I am presenting here is that we have the planet Venus in the sign of Aries in retrograde. And Venus goes in, into retrograde every 18 or 19 months. So it's not something that happens very often. And when it does happen, it's very significant. Now, the place where Venus is in retrograde right now in the sign of Aries, the last time she was in retrograde, in the sign of Aries, where she is right now, was 2009, so eight years ago. And there's something significant about that, about closing cycles, and therefore there's new beginnings coming our way. And just as a side note, I want to invite you to look back um, at, at your life at that time, 2009, eight years ago around the same time as well, let's say February, March, April of 2009. And look at your life back then. And if you can remember, if it's something significant, or even if it's not that significant, but where, where were you at with your life when it comes to your relationship with yourself, your relationships in general, partnerships, finances, projects, um, something to be said about what were your values back then and what are your values now? What do you value in your life that has drastically changed from that time? Or maybe there's something that is still the same you still value that same thing or things, but in a different way. And as you can see at the bottom here that I, I wrote, uh, time to raise up the bar. And that's exactly what we are looking at. So I want to talk about what's going on right now with the lovers in the zodiac. So Venus is in retrograde in the sign of Aries. And she's going to go back to Pisces and come back to Aries. And I'll talk about that in a moment. But I want to bring in Mr. Mars. And Mars just went into the sign of Taurus just a couple of days ago. And 
I'll just show the chart, uh, the chart here for a moment. So I know some of you are versed in astrology. Some of you have no idea maybe what I'm talking about. But it's really cool just to see the chart and have a, a, an idea of this is a picture of the cosmos, basically, in 2D of, of what's happening. And this is the chart for the full moon that is happening tomorrow, March 12th, uh, at 7.54 a.m. Pacific time uh, in the, on the west coast of the U.S., so full moon, what happens during a full moon is that the sun and the moon are opposing each other, okay, as you can see, and I'll, I'll talk about the full moon, but I want to show you in the chart of uh, what I'm talking about, Venus that is right here in the sign of Aries, and this is the, the symbol that says R, that she's in retrograde, and then we have Mars right here. This is Mars, and Mars just went into the sign of Taurus, so at the beginning of, of Taurus. So a lot of the energy that we've been feeling in the last um, 30 to 40 days, the whole time that Mars was in the sign of Aries, felt very exciting. Um, this, this momentum, this moving forward. Mars is our masculine energy. It's our ambition. It's our drive. It's our willpower. And... Mars in the sign of Aries is very fiery. It's its natural sign. Mars feels at home when he's in Aries, and it can be like a like a race car. If you can think about, if if you want to visualize what Mars in Aries is, is a race car. There's nothing stopping it. Him, it just wants to go, and that's a really really awesome energy to utilize and to use. When, it, when it's time for a, this, a new spark in your life, when it's time to move forward, when it's time to initiate, Mars in, Tor, and Mars in Aries is the initiator. And to really invest and put more fire into the direction that, you, that you're going into, uh, put some more fire into your life. So that's a really exciting energy. At the same time, and really depending on your own chart and how you deal with fire energy. It can feel very ungrounded. It can feel very, like, very exciting. And at the same time, it can feel very uh, chaotic. And with the, with the fact that we've got all this Pisces going on, the feeling of chaotic, I'm kind of getting lost can feel very dominant. So I am very happy myself personally that Mars has moved into Taurus because what that does is that it gives us more stability. It gives us more a sense of direction. It's still exciting, it's still moving forward but it's a bit slower. For some, that can be challenging. For some, that can feel like they're stuck in the mud and not moving anywhere. And for some, that can bring a lot more relaxation. And like I, like I um, said over here, slow and steady, steady wins the race. So, what I want to invite you is to cultivate that energy of Mars in Taurus by still moving forward, but step-by-step -step approach rather than just go, 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 do, 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 burn yourself out just because you feel very excited about something. Because what we have here, we do have Venus in the sign of Aries. So Venus in the sign of Aries can be very impulsive, very impulsive. The fact that Venus is in retrograde helps us quite a bit to not be so impulsive and to actually slow down. Because when Venus is in retrograde, that's what's happening. It's just the slowing down of the energies. But nevertheless, Venus in Aries can be very impulsive. So right now, I definitely encourage to keep the attitude of slow and steady rather 
rather than jumping into things. And when it comes to Venus, we're looking at our finances, our money, uh, projects, relationships, things that we are attracted to, things that we like. It has everything to do with our five senses with Venus, our sensuality, our bodily pleasures. And you can only imagine with Venus in Aries, um, the impulses can be very strong to satisfy the impulses, to satisfy what feels like an instinct, because Aries is the sign, again, that associated with Mars. It's our instincts. It's our primal desires. And none of this is bad, but with the energies right now, the invitation is to not just go for it, kind of an attitude. Um, Venus and Aries can be like, do first, think later. And when Mars was in Aries for the last month or so, that was, that was more fuel to the fire, literally. Like, I'll just do first, think later kind of an attitude. So that is slowing down. And that's a good thing. The way I see it, it's a good thing. And when Venus in, um, Venus in retrograde in the sign of Aries, it's an opportunity to really look at all those impulses, the retrograde motion is basically an invitation to go inwards and to take this internal inventory and to go to, to have this introspective time looking at all those issues in your life. When it comes to values, when it comes to Venus, is what do I value? Those are the questions. I want to invite you to ask yourself during this Venus retrograde, which is 40 days. You know, it's no coincidences that all the mystics, the prophets, so many spiritual scriptures that we know about talk about the significance of 40 days and 40 nights. And the fact that Venus goes into in, in Venus is in retrograde for 40 days is very symbolic as well. It's the time for us to go on that inward journey, on that inward quest, and ask all the necessary questions that we need to ask ourselves in order for those new beginnings to really emerge. So the questions that are associated with Venus and Venus in Aries, first of all, relationship with yourself. Venus in Aries, Aries is the me, Aries is the self. It's the first sign of the zodiac. That's where it all starts. It's not so much about being selfish, it's just the self, it's me. Aries is the me. And when Venus is in Aries, Venus is the sign of relation, is the planet that rules relationships. It's such an invitation to reevaluate your relationship with yourself reevaluate what is the quality that you're looking for in your life first of all the quality of the relationship with yourself and going back to like i said eight years ago what is the difference from then to now what has changed and what would you like to keep cultivating what has changed that has really helped you to amplify the quality of your life. And I really like to emphasize the quality over quantity. Venus is all about quality. Venus doesn't care about quantity. She just wants the best, the greatest and the best. And when Venus is in Aries, is for you to want that for yourself only the best and the greatest, which in turn asks you to look at what is in your life that is not the greatest and the best. And that is from the, from the inner to the outer. What's within you that is not the greatest and the best when it comes to your relationship with yourself? What kind of thoughts do you have about yourself? Thoughts that you have about who you are? Beliefs? beliefs about what you are capable of, all kind of beliefs that perhaps limit you. Are those beliefs of quality 
And if it's not, if it's not enhancing your life, then you know, I am ready for a new beginning within myself. Now, it's not going to be from overnight, but that's the slow and steady. Observe just what are the thoughts? What are the beliefs? What is within me that is not enhancing the quality of my life? And start taking the necessary steps to adjust that with love. So with Venus, it's all about love. Love for yourself. And that's what's going to enhance the quality of the relationship with yourself. When Venus goes back to the sign of Pisces, so it's Venus is in Aries right now, and she's going backwards. So she's going to go back into the sign of Pisces right here. Uh, I believe it's March... March 27th or March 28th, I think she goes back into Pisces. And Venus is very strong in Pisces. She's exalted there. That's her castle. And going into Pisces is the invitation and the opportunity to cultivate more compassion for yourself, first of all, as you're going through this process, cultivating more compassion for yourself and then more compassion for others and the world at large. And especially with what's going on right now, the more that we can cultivate understanding and compassion, seeing the bigger picture, the better for all of us, the better for, 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 for our own individual lives and for humanity at large. Venus in Pisces, Pisces is the sign of spirit. It's God. So within the introspection time of looking at your relationship with yourself, when Venus dips back into Pisces, there's no coincidence there, by the way, you know, whatever is happening in the cosmos, nothing is a coincidence. It's looking at our relationship with God, with spirit, however you relate to God, however you relate to spirit. But it's time to ask those questions of, what is the quality of my relationship with that God, spirit, source, universe, however you want to call it? And how is that affecting the relationship that I have with myself? How, where is the connection between the two? And then, of course, taking those two and how is that affecting my relationships just in general, my relationship to life and everything else in my life? So these are deep questions during this 40 day period to ask yourself. Venus is going to be in retrograde until April 15th. So we have about um, 32 days or so. So, what are my values? What do I really value in life? Like I said, inwardly within yourself, and then of course, outwardly, what do I value in relationships? Looking again, quality over quantity. Do I need to have 500 friends that I try to keep, stay in touch with, but I really get depleted or it doesn't enhance my life? Or am I satisfied with even one, if, if let's say it's one, but just a small amount of quality relationships, quality connections that feed me so much, that enhances my life so much that I, I, I'm filled I feel really satisfied. You know, Venus is, Venus wants to be satisfied. But how do we satisfy all those wants? What do we feed those wants? What do we feed those desires? What, what, do, what is it that I truly want, which is connected and related to what do I value? So when I start looking at quality over quantity, most of the time, that means that I need to start cutting some things out. Because with all that, with what I value and what I want, comes the question of what are my priorities? I'm starting to value quality over quantity. I'm starting to value certain relationship in my, relationships in my life because they add to the quality of my life. That means that certain relationships might 
not stay in my life or it's, a, it's time to change something within those relationships. With this full moon that is coming in Virgo, and that's how the full moon ties into this, Virgo is all about the day-to-day life. It's reality. It's your schedule, your routine. And that is a big, big theme happening with this full moon and with these themes, looking at your day-to-day life. Because we can ask the big questions and the big, okay, the future. But looking at your day-to-day life, everything that has to do with quality over quantity, what do I value? What enhances the quality of my life on a day-to-day basis? What do I truly, truly want? How do I want to feel? How do I want to feel in my body? Venus in Aries is so much body. Mars in Taurus, it's so much about the body. So how do I want to feel in my body? What do I truly value? Do I value health? Do I value well-being? And if I do, then what are my priorities in my day-to-day life that are actually going to help me to enhance my well-being, to enhance the way I feel in my body, to enhance the way I feel about myself. So those are all big themes. We are looking at a lot of our physicality right now when it comes to the body because the, the full moon is taking place in an earth sign, Virgo. And then we have Mars moving into Taurus, which is so much about the body, so much about the body. And again, it's time to raise up the bar. And in however way that it shows up in your life to raise up the bar, when it comes to your daily life, when it comes to to your routine, how can you raise up the bar for yourself? It doesn't have to be huge, by the way, you guys. It doesn't have to be. It can be, again, slow and steady. And you can add to slow and steady tiny steps. And the, the, the smallest adjustment can make the biggest difference. So if you can pick even one thing that is rooted in reality, again, not just get lost in the Piscean, Pisces energy of like, oh yeah, I can do this and this and this and that, and then you end up not doing anything, that can be Pisces, but going into the Virgo uh, mindset of let me just pick one thing that I know I can do and that's gonna enhance my entire day. Just a small example. And start prioritizing. If you know that your meditation really helps you to stay grounded, to stay rooted in your center, it enhances the quality of your life, then do it. This is not the time to slack around. I'll just say that. With the full moon in Virgo, with all the, 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 uh, the Venus in retrogrades, Mars in Taurus, there's just no slacking here. There's no cutting corners but it's really doing the things that, enhancing, that enhance the quality of your life. And if you know that something enhances the quality of your life and it helps you, then do it. So if you know that meditation helps you, make room in your day to do it. If you know that moving your body on a daily basis helps you, then make room to do that, even if it's 10 minutes. If you know that certain foods don't agree with your body, then that's the time to to start making adjustments. And if you know certain foods do agree with your body and make you feel better, that's the time to do it. And to do all those adjustments, raise up the bar in your life. And that's just in your own physicality, in your own routine, in your own daily life. And then take your focus onto your passions. Okay, Mars is our passion. Venus in, in Aries, very passionate. Looking at your passions. Where are you investing your energy? Are you investing your energy in what really lights, lights your fire? And if you don't, why? And then make room in your life to start to prioritize your life in a way that you do invest time in what makes you feel alive. That's part of the relationship with yourself. That makes you feel passionate. If there's certain projects that really ignite you, that you've been putting on hold or haven't paid attention to, this is a great time to come back to it. That's the quality over quantity. If, if your energy is too dispersed in, in a lot of directions, 
this is the time to bring it in and to zoom in and to really pick, oh, okay, because my, some of you might be facing with a lot of things on their plate and a lot of opportunities and doors that have been opened, but that doesn't mean that you've got to walk through each and every single door that is in front of you. This is where um, I ask myself, what do I truly want? Truly want, not should, what should I do? But what do I truly want? Because it's something that I value so deeply and I value it because I know that it's enhancing the quality of my life. And to see everything through that lens, everything through that lens. And now a big thing that is going to be in front, of, in front of us with Venus and Mars is relationships. So we have the lovers of the zodiac. In, we call it a mutual reception. What does that mean? For those of you especially that don't know astrology, mutual reception is when the planets occupy each other's signs. So like I said, Venus is an area, Aries, and Aries is the sign of Mars. Mars is in Taurus, and Taurus is the sign of Venus. So you see how there's a beautiful interaction right now between female, male, feminine, masculine energies within the zodiac. Mutual reception that for us as human beings on, the, on Earth, that, can be, that is a very beneficial energy to utilize when it comes to our own ability to balance our feminine and masculine. So if our masculine is the go, move forward, do, linear thinking, the feminine is the surrendering space the patience space, really look, taking time and seeing the quality of things, not just making decisions out of an impulse. So you can ride the waves of both and really feeling the passion, really feeling your, excited, your excitement and let those things steer you in the direction of the quality of your life. But at the same time, let, let those passions guide you, but don't let them take you into a, an impulsive state. So basically, you just wait. You can feel passion. You can feel a draw. Wait until you're absolutely sure that you know this is what I truly want because I know that this is enhancing the quality of my life. So with Mars in, in Taurus, patience. For some of you, not a big deal. You're going to enjoy this energy more than anything else. For others, myself included, those that really need to, to learn patience, this, is my, this might be challenging, but my invita invitation to you is take on that challenge. And learn how to value that slow and steady pace, knowing that you're building something very special. You're raising up the bar in your life. It's not something you want to do overnight. So if, it, if, it's, um, if it's, a, it's your own life, if it's your career, if it's your creativity and what it is that you are creating and doing in your life, same, th same thing goes to your finances. It is a really good time to be more, more calculated, more slow and steady when you make your decisions around finances. And then again, big theme, we're looking at relationships. And that's a big theme throughout 2017 going into 2018. Relationships are in the forefront of our consciousness. And during a, a Venus retrograde, we are, we are invited to reevaluate the quality of our relationships. If there's room for improvement or if there's room to remove something out of your life, if necessary, make room for new beginnings, for new beginnings. Even within the relationships, if there, are, if there are changes that need to be implement, implemented, changes that need to be made, adjustments, slow and steady. Be patient. 
You might be need to be patient with your partner right now more than any other time. But you keep asking yourself the quality over quantity. What do I really value? What do I really want within the context of relationships? What are my priorities? And know that if the relationships, whatever the relationship is, if that doesn't align with your values, with what you truly want, then you need to reevaluate that relationship in your life. Um, so that's Venus in retrograde and the, the, the time period. And it, it is a beautiful time for us. I don't believe that retrograde is a horrible time whatsoever. I wouldn't advise necessarily to step into a new relationship. Uh, and if you are in something new, slow and steady, definitely take your time. Definitely take your time. Uh, with all these Pisces energy that is going on, we also, um, you know, we can be delusional. I'll be honest with you. With, with Pisces in the picture, all this Pisces in the picture, still we had the eclipse in Pisces just a few weeks ago. Things can, we can look at things through um, um, rose-colored glasses. You know, just seeing the unicorn, unicorns and the butterflies and not so much the, the reality. So if you are finding yourself in a new relationship, Take it slow. It might be hard to do that with what, what are we, with, with what we're looking at right now. But the fact that Mars went into Taurus um, will make it a bit easier to be patient, to take things slow, to let things be shown to you, to be grounded, to really be grounded. Um, so that's the Venus and Mars themes that I, that I wanted to talk about. Um, I just love the fact that we have this mutual reception going on between the lovers of the Zodiac. So it is a great time for love. It is a great time for relationships, um, just not impulsive and not just relying all the, on the spark of the relationship because it's just, if, if you just go into something because, because of the spark, um, it's, it's not going to be long lasting, which is not a bad thing. It, again, it go, goes back to knowing what you want. What do I truly want? If you just want the spark and a fling, great, go for it, you know. But if you know that that's not, that's not truly what you want, you just don't value that anymore, maybe you used to, but it's not a priority anymore. There's different priorities. And that's the invitation, again, from the eight years ago. Look at who you are now. Vastly different. How you do relationship relationships how do you do your relationship with yourself how do you do relationships in general you are a completely different person with a completely different set of values and a completely different sets of wants and desires when it comes to relationships so make sure that you're following the voice of the now and not what you used to be or what used to ignite your fire if it's not a priority if it's not really enhancing who you are and the bar that you are choosing to raise for yourself and for your life, I would advise to um, just move on. You know, there's, there's, there's definitely bigger and greater things for you, which uh, brings me to the full moon in Virgo that is happening on March 12th, making your dreams a reality. And on the bottom here, I said, big harvest if you're willing to do the work. And I know it sounds like, oh, God, I don't want to do the work. And it doesn't have to be something bad um, or exhausting. You know, you can really approach this work from, from a curious perspective. Uh, and the work that I mean is the inner, that, like I was talking about with Venus in retrograde, especially the inner work and, of course, the outer work as well. Because what we are looking with, uh, where we're looking at with this full moon, it's definitely an immense opportunity to make your dreams a reality. Like I spoke in, like I said earlier, we, we're having a lot of earth energy, which is very stabilizing. It's very, um, it's rooted in reality. We have uh, the moon in Virgo. So this is Virgo right here. And then Mars is in Taurus. So there is a, a, a very harmonious conversation happening between Mars and the moon. Uh, we call it a trine in astrology. 
and it's an earth trine, very good when it comes to manifesting. And that's where the piece of you've got to do the work comes in. Because with all these Piscean energy, there are a lot of dreams. And what we are looking at right now with Venus in retrograde in Aries and with the sun still in Pisces and Mercury, the planet that rules our mind, our logical mind, our thought process, our perceptions, all of that is in the sign of Pisces. We are looking at our dreams, maybe even revisiting some of our dreams, some of our passions that are connected to our dreams. What do we dream? What do I dream for my life? And your passions are, are the, the guiding light. That's the North Star. So we can have a lot of dreams here in Pisces, which is a beautiful thing. But you can see with the, with the opposition of sun and moon, we can look at um, our dreams versus our reality. And how to balance the two. Meaning, have your dreams, let your passions show you how to move about in a direction that moves you closer to your dreams. And at the same time, we can just stay in the state of dreaming. We've got to do the work. And that's what Moon in Virgo is. That's the work that, I've, that I talked about. So when it comes to your own self inwardly, if there's things that you know that you want to adjust, you have a dream for yourself to, to, do, to be something. Let's just say, I'll just give an example. You have a dream for yourself and it'd be something very small. I, I want to I wanna feel more peaceful within myself. Very, very small dream that you can have for yourself. Maybe it's not small for some of you. Well, just dreaming about it is great, but it's not enough. You got to do the action. Take the action, do the work. Whatever needs to be adjusted within yourself and within your life that will help you to get to that state. So if, if there's things that are causing drama or chaos in your life, then that's when we go back to what do I value? Well, I don't value chaos anymore. I really don't value drama. I value peace. That's what I truly want. So what are my priorities? I am going to invest more of my energy into the things that actually bring me peace rather than drama and chaos. Quality. That's the quality that I'm looking for. Okay? So that's just one example. And then if you have, we're talking about more of the external dreams of creating something. I want to create something in my life. Well, I've got to do the work. I, I'll give you an example of my own personal life. And it's, it's very challenging. Uh, I've been wanting to write a book for years. I've never seen myself as a writer per se. Uh, that's not a natural thing that comes to me. It's not something that has chased me my entire life, but it's something that has been knocking on my door for many years. And I'm in the process of writing this book. And it, it is part of my dream, a part of a dream that I have, that, I, that I've had for many years of building something and creating something in my life and creating a movement and influencing uh, the world. And, that, I can, and I can sit with that dream and just keep and dream and dream and dream about it. But hey, I've got to do the work. And writing a book is work. And so whatever it is that you can, you can feel challenged, maybe feel challenged in your life of what is this dream that I have and, and I know that I need to put the work to bring that dream into manifestation and like I wrote here, there's a big harvest. There's a big harvest waiting for us if we are willing to do the work, whatever the work may be. And be patient with yourself. Again, be very patient with yourself. 
And now another thing that can come up with this full moon and what it's being illuminated. You know, full moon is a time of illumination. We have the opposition of the sun and the moon. The, the light of the sun is, is reflected by the moon and that's why the moon looks full and bright and beautiful. And what is being illuminated with this full moon, your dreams also, like I said, your dreams, but also your delusions. Where are you maybe being a little delusional and not rooted in reality? Or where are you just letting your dreams or your delusions take you away from um, the, of the things that you do, need to do in your day-to-day -day life, moon and Virgo? Like I, was, like I mentioned earlier, your daily life, your daily routine, you really need to look at that. And the work also that I ref refer to with the sign of Virgo and Mars being in Taurus, simplify. Earth signs are very simple, very simple, especially Taurus. Quality, definitely quality, but simple, if that makes sense. Maybe for some quality is like the more the merrier, that's quality for me. But with the sign of Taurus is really simplifying. I really see that as, as quality. You know, you have a few quality things. That's all you need. Simplify. You don't need tons. You just need the quality. So simplify your life. Also with Virgo is purification and cleansing. And we, we have been sitting in that energy for the, for the last year and a half, almost. The big call from the universe for all of us to, cl to cleanse and to purify, to detoxify everything, our bodies, our minds, our emotions, our emotional bodies, our relationships, learning discernment. So that's being illuminated again with this full moon. Where do you need more discernment to discern? This is the right thing for me. This is not the right thing for me. From the little things to the bigger things. And where do you need to have more boundaries in your life? That's a really important aspect that we are looking at because Pisces doesn't know any boundaries. There's no boundaries with Pisces. And it's very easy with all this energy in Pisces still going on. We slowly but surely are going to come out of all this Pisces energy, but we still very much in it until the sun moves into Aries, which I'm going to talk about the second half of the month. But still now, you know, very easy to not know boundaries. So with yourself, like where do you, where do you know I need some boundaries with myself? Like I'm, 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 cutting, I'm cutting too much slack for myself. You know, there's no boundaries. And I know that if I, if I have new priorities, I have, I have new values, there's, that means I need to set up some boundaries with myself. And then, of course, when those boundaries, when, when you have clarity, which this full moon is going to bring a lot of clarity of where do I need to have more boundaries with other people and in my relationships. Again, Venus in retrograde, we keep going back to relationships. It's very, very significant right now. And anything in your life that you are in a relationship with, we are in relationship with everything. So where are the boundaries that need to be set? Maybe some lines that need to be drawn, and it's not a bad thing. With Venus in, in Aries and in retrograde, again, it's okay to be an individual self. Yeah, there's one is consciousness, and we all one, and there is unity, and you are an autonomous, sovereign individual responsible for your own world. And your own world is your body, your mind your heart, your soul. So this full moon is illuminating. What do you need to do to make your dreams a reality? What do you need to do to make all of those aspirations a reality? Now, the interesting invitation from the universe, which I find so wonderful, is to look at with the moon in Virgo, is what's, what is within your control? There are some things that are within your control. If you know that I want to go from point A to point B, it's in my control to get 
into the car and drive from point A to point B. That's in my control. Now, what's going to happen from point A to point B? Not so much in your control, right? So with this full moon, it's what is in my control versus where do I need to surrender and let go? I, 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 I can't control it, no matter how much I even try. I have no idea what's going to happen from point A to point B. Even if I think I know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's a short ride. Well, a lot can happen within that short ride. And with Pisces, that's, you know, the sun in, in, in Pisces with Neptune in Pisces. And Neptune is magic. Neptune is spirit. Neptune is the complete surrender with, with Pisces. So what is in my control? Where do I need to let go and make room for magic? And to find the balance between you two, between the two. And that goes back to Venus and Mars, feminine and masculine. The masculine, it's in my control. I'm going to do the work. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get from point A to point B. The feminine, well, honey, you have no idea what's going to happen from point A to point B. So let's just relax. Let's just take a deep breath. Sun in Pisces. Mercury is still in Pisces. Relax your mind. Open your mind to the bigger picture. Some things might not go your way. So you need to learn how to cultivate patience. Again, Mars in Taurus. And know that there's a bigger picture. That's the Pisces. That's the magic. And what can, what can happen with all this Piscean energy, it's very easy to fall into the victim consciousness, into victimhood. Why is this happening to me? I wanted to get from point A to point B. I thought I'm going to be at point B two hours ago. I'm still on the way. What's going on? And, and you start, start spiraling into this, oh, it's, 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 it's all happening to me, or it's all my fault. Everybody has a different relationship to how they relate to their own victim consciousness. The, the place where we start to feel like a victim. It's happening to me, or it's my fault. And, and start sending all that toxic energy towards yourself. And the invitation f that I have for you with all that is to just be m mindful of that. Be careful to not fall into the victim. That's when you have to see the beauty of life and to trust. That's the complete surrender of Pisces. Now, this full moon is in a loose square to Saturn. So Saturn is right here in Sagittarius. And that can feel... Like there's some challenges. There's some challenges. There's some limitations of reality. There are some limitations when it comes to our physical reality. We can't just, you know, blink our eyes and go from Australia to, to San Diego. No, there's, there's planes involved and all that stuff. So that's the physical reality that we need to um, just be okay with and see the quote unquote obstacles or limitations as merely a gift that the universe that's the pisces again the universe has a divine plan and i am not exempt from that plan and everything that happens to me is part of a bigger plan and that takes you from being a victim to being a powerful creator and that's part of doing the work that i was talking about so you notice yourself just, you know, in the next few weeks, because the opportunity to make your dreams a reality is very potent right now. It's very, very potent. But you also have to be diligent with your mind. You have to be very diligent with your mind. And whatever is in your control, it's in your control. It's not in your control. You just let it go and surrender. And even your own ability to take yourself from being a victim to being a powerful creator is in your control. Not to beat yourself up when you go into victimhood. Hey, you are human, we are humans, we're gonna go there. The power comes from noticing, oh, oh, here I am again. And, and, and step away from it. That's the doing the work. And there's big harvest that, that comes with it. Big time with this full moon. The illumination is, is really potent. And the ability to move forward and to make our dreams come true literally is so potent. 
and that's that's the that's the full moon now with um this is the the full moon that happening on the 12th and then on march 20th you're going to have a new moon in aries and that's the sp spring equinox so we are going to shift gears to in astrology that's actually the new year astrologically that's the new year spring equinox sun moves into aries which is the first sign of the zodiac so this is aries sun is still in pisces finishing her cycle in his his or her i like to see the sun as a her but the sun is finishing her cycle in pisces and then she's going to move into aries and that's the rebirth that's the new beginnings so a lot of what we've, you've been, we've been doing in the last two months and with this cycle of the, the full moon that is coming to completion, we are in this preparation for a new beginning, a new era in your life. So things are going to shift gears in the month of March. We're going to feel it. Also, we have Mercury moving into the sign of aries as well on the 20 on the 13th i'm sorry so we have the full moon on the 12th and then the following day mercury is going to move into aries so that can feel again a lot of that excitement intellectually logically within your mind there's going to be more of, of, of clarity sense of direction sense of direction maybe even new ideas new sparks new curiosity follow that curiosity follow that new line of curiosity it might be new it might be reignited from the past that's actually very very possible right now of things from the past coming back to you don't disregard it if there's a passion there if there's curiosity follow that line of curiosity and passion now, Mercury, which again is the, is the planet that is associated with our mind, is going to go through a lot um, in the last couple of weeks here of March. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interacting with a lot of the uh, outer planets and big energies. Uh, it's going to square Pluto, and it's going to conjunct Uranus right here within a matter of a few days. So that's, that's the last couple of weeks of March. So that's a lot of transformation that we're going to experience within our mind, your perceptions, your thoughts, your thought process. It's not going to feel easy necessarily, but at the same time, it's an invitation to, to cultivate so much more power, your mental powers, the mental powers that you need to move, to move your life into this new beginning. So you need that mental power. You need that concentration. You need that focus. And Mars meeting Uranus, that can be very shocking. So that can be, you might receive shocking news or just have shocking ideas. It's, uh, it's very out of the box. It's, it's very electrifying as well. So again, very exciting energy. And at the same time, depending on, on each and every individual, that can feel very um, too much, too much for the nervous system. So if you are, if you do know yourself to be sensitive and do know yourself to get overwhelmed really quickly, especially when there's a lot of mental activity, those of you that are more sensitive to that and you know that about yourself, I want to encourage you even more so to take it slow this month maybe slower than you want to, to do things that, are, that, that ground you, that keep you grounded, that keep you stable, and keep you in your body. If you know that you have a tendency to like fly away, then do whatever you can to stay more rooted in reality and in your body. Um, and then by the end of the month, and that's going to feel, we're going to, we're going to get another boost of, of grounding energy. Mercury is going to move into Taurus right on the 31st of March. So we're going to finish the month with Mercury moving into the sun of Taurus. 
uh, is going to join Mars and Taurus. And again, the stability, feeling more grounded is, is going to be even more pronounced. But from now until then, there's a lot of exciting energies. And the way for you to cultivate those exciting energies is not to burn yourself with the excitement, but let that excitement spark you and, and help you build a strong foundation. Because we are looking at some serious new beginnings that are happening for many of us in, in many areas and in many ways. Um, yeah, I believe that that's, that's all I have for this month, which is quite a lot. I want to see if uh, any of you have questions. And it can be a personal question or a question about anything I just talked about. Let me see how. So if you have any question, you can, okay, let me look. If you have any question, you can either write it in the chat box or you can raise your hand and let me know that you have questions. and I'll unmute you. Come on, no questions? <laughs> I must have been really clear about everything. <laughs> I have a question. Do you wanna, you want me to unmute you or do you wanna type it? I'll unmute you. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Hey, Bear. Yeah. Yes, that was actually you were really clear, so it would make sense. Also, I don't know how to raise my hand. How do you do that? Um, I might be confused. I think there's an option um, in the yeah, in I the see it. yeah in the chat. Okay. Um. So. Everything was really clear. There was one section that I, I don't know what I was doing, but I kind of missed the meat of it. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask you, I feel like a big theme for me right now is kind of balancing between the masculine and the feminine way of working. And or in general, just actually um, the theme of just masculine and feminine is coming up a lot for me. And at some point you were discussing that and I was just wondering, I don't really know what the question is, but I'm wondering if there's any insight into um, where that's coming from. If that's, if that's, I uh, could go back to my notes, but um, if there's any advice. Let's see. I've, let's see. You were talking about. Hmm. Uh, Venus and Pisces. I don't really know. I th I, yeah, I think I actually I I know how to to go about this question because it's it's also from a very personal experience of of what I'm experiencing in my life. But what I was talking about is the mutual reception that is going on between Venus and Mars right now. So Venus represents the feminine energy. Mars represents the masculine yeah. energy. Right. So that's for all of us. Mutual mm -hmm. reception means that the planets are in each other's signs. And, and that's, a, that's a beautiful interaction that is happening between the masculine and the feminine right now. And of course, you're feeling it because that's the conversation happening in the cosmos right now between Mars and Venus. So you're feeling within yourself this um, and self-inquiry because, again, Venus is in retrograde. So there's a lot of self-inquiries that are going to come up for you when it comes to your own inner relationship of the feminine and the masculine. So it might be for you a big theme doing this Venus, in retro, uh, Venus retrograde to examine 
that relationship that you have within yourself of feminine and masculine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where is the happy balance for you? Mm -hmm. That's, that's the key. It's the happy balance. So we go back to what do you value in life? What do you really want? Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's going to start pointing you in the direction of more balance. And it's, it's going to start becoming a little bit easier now that Mars has moved into Taurus to not just be too fiery and too masculine and too go, go, go. We're going to start feeling a little bit, it's going to start feeling a little easier to cultivate more of the feminine quality as well within the doing. And I know for me that that's, that's, that's what I've been really looking at and experimenting in my life. Because when we get really focused on something, which is really fantastic, and we, 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 we just we go and we do things because we are focused, but that can be very out of balance as well. And then we don't make room to do the things that actually open our bodies and bring us back to our bodies and actually help us to relax. Mm -hmm. And all those things can actually help us in the doing rather than just dive in into the doing and forget about everything else. Mm -hmm. you know, so that's a very masculine approach. Love it. Thank you. Um, just so good. I love when you said, what is within your control and where do I need to let go and make room for magic? It's mm -hmm. like so simple. And that's what, it's just so that's amazing to hear amazing. this webinar and just feel such confirmation. My main focus these days when I haven't known what to do, it's like, well, consolidate. So I've been cleaning out my closet, only keeping things that are high quality, like almost like I'm ready to go on some kind of trip, you know, <laughs> it's like everything is the highest quality. My life is really about priorities and then things fall under that category. And what do I value? So it's just interesting to hear all of this and to feel like I'm sure people on the call are feeling very similar, you know, it's really mm -hmm. awesome. Mm. Before you go. Oh yeah. And before you go, I was just curious there. You've left a lot of questions. Like I was taking notes during this, like reflection questions to be asking ourselves. Um, for the full moon tomorrow, do you have any recommendations on kind of how we could spend that? That's like spend a half hour, hour with ourselves. Um, that would be most supportive for the full moon. Yeah, absolutely. And we're actually going to finish with a little meditation that oh, cool. okay. for, for the full moon that you more than have more than welcome to actually do the same thing tomorrow. But that's, that's part of, of what I wanted to do here with, with all of you after we're done with the questions and I just want to say thank you for sharing. And uh, definitely so many people are in that space of, of clearing. And as mm -hmm. so many people are in the process of clearing their stuff, like actual stuff, clearing the closet. Like I've been talking to so many people that are, are doing that right now. It's really amazing. And it is, it's a very Virgo thing to do. Let me just purge my closet. Like I don't need this. I don't need this. Simplify, simplify purify, clear, cleanse. All those things are, are a metaphor for cleansing. You clear your space, your external space. That's just a reflection of your inner space starting to be cleared and purified. Everything that you feel inclined to do on the external it starts from the inward, it starts from within. Mm -hmm. So that's just a sign for you to know, oh, from within yourself, there's a need, there's a desire for more space, for, for, mm -hmm. for, for that, that, that purity is taking place, that, that, that cleansiness is taking place. It wouldn't be a drive well, in there for you. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, like, and it's not only the space, but it's also I, it's focus on quality. Exactly. Everything that remains, I want it to be the highest quality. Exactly. has not been in the past for me. Yes. You know, it's kind of like what I can get kind of attitude around what I was wearing and kind of relationships I was in and kind of being lax in what I was like kind of nourishing my body with. And it's just, and how I was nourishing my body and how I was eating, like as far as mindfulness and how I was cooking as far as mindfulness. It's just like everything is shifting towards a quality, mm -hmm. not just eliminating, but now, okay, quality. 
you know, that will have what remains specifically relationships. And it's like, wow, I have fewer relationships and, but the ones I do have match my values, like you were saying. So it's a lot of work. It's work. It feels like internal work, but it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I love it. And that's exactly what, what, what I said is it, it takes work. It takes work. And that, that work will manifest in many different ways and in different ways for, for all of us too. <laughs> but the harvest, the harvest, because Virgo is also the harvest. That's what Virgo represents. You know, we plant mm-hmm. seeds and then it's time to harvest. And Virgo represents harvest, harvesting. And so with that work, there comes a big harvest. The more you invest yourself in yourself and in that, that, in, in, in that which brings you quality, the more you're going to enjoy the harvest, your mm-hmm. own harvest from within yourself and whatever you, you're going to manifest in your mm-hmm. life. So that's, that's what I wanted to say with, with all this is this is such an amazing time of manifestation, but what, what, are, we, what are we manifesting too? And that's when it goes back to the quality. And the little things are going to affect the big things. You, you clear your closet and you start paying attention to the quality of, of things in your life and it's going to spill into everything. You, you won't be able to have relationships that are, are, are not set to that bar. You're not going to, you're just not going to be able to even walk into them. Mm-hmm. Just like you, you unable to eat something. Let's just say that is just like, Oh my God, I'm not going to put that in my body. You know, the quality of that thing. You know, it's like old rotten sitting in the fridge for two weeks. You're like, I'm not going to eat that shit, you know, and <laughs> like, nah, things change. So it's basically, you know, big, big message with this is uh, things, things are changing. Things have changed. Things will continue to change and to not be afraid to do the necessary cuts or adjustments so those changes can actually be integrated and implemented into our lives. Mm-hmm. So good. Yeah. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. It's so valuable. Thanks. Laura. Yeah. Thank you, Bear. Do I have Do I have anybody else with a question? You can um, type it. in the chat box because if we if we don't have any other questions i will go ahead and close with a little meditation set up an intention for the moon for the full moon this weekend okay so if there's no other questions Let us close with some good words, some good prayers, some good intentions for our lives and for the world at large right now. And again, the full moon is happening exactly, um, it's tomorrow on the 12th. No, so that's actually, for me, it's tomorrow, but on the West Coast, it's two days from now. On the 12th, on a Sunday, let's just keep it simple. On, on March 12th, Sunday, it's 7.54 a.m. And this is what I would like to offer for this full moon. You can close your eyes or whatever you want to do. Just find yourself in a comfortable position. And first, let's take a a deep breath together. Inhale through the nose. And exhale, open your mouth and let it all out. Take another full, full breath. Fill up your lungs. Feel your entire body expanding with that breath. 
And then open your mouth and exhale. Big, big, big exhale, release. Full moons are about releasing also. They illuminate a lot, but they also help us to release. We get to the point of the full moon, and then from the full moon to the new moon, it's like emptying the tank. So just continue to breathe, inhale and exhale. And with every exhale, feel like you're emptying the tank. Emptying the tank. Just allow yourself to get empty. This is where we need to surrender and to let go of control, knowing that the emptiness is merely a space for new things to arrive. Continue with intentional breathing and with each exhale, I invite you to empty the tank. In whichever way that you need to empty your mental tank, your emotional tank, your physical tank. With each breath, a little bit lighter, a little bit more clear. Each breath is purifying and cleansing any debris that is still in there. The eclipses that we had in February were portals. Portals that we've walked into initiating new cycles. And the harvest that is coming from those initiations has everything to do with where you put where you're putting your focus on right now and how much you're able to empty yourself of the things that are not moving you forward, that are not moving you into that new cycle, that like a heavy baggage that you can take on the plane. There's a big harvest. You want to make room for it. Clear out your plate, clear out your basket. Imagine yourself in the middle of a big field, a big orchard, a big garden, whatever resonates with you the most. See that field, garden, orchard. See that place filled with so much goodness, the abundance of Mother Earth. All of that is offered to you. All the seeds that you have planted. Some of them are still babies waiting to grow and some of them are ready to be cultivated, ready to be harvested. And know within yourself, what am I ready to harvest? What am I ready to harvest? Harvesting only the quality, best fruit that is ready to be picked. As you're seeing yourself within that orchard or that garden, and you can see all the ripe berries, and you see all the ripe apples, and all the ready-to-be-picked lettuces and flowers, bright and shiny and vibrant, carry so much beauty, so much beauty that will only enhance your life. 
the quality of your life. I'm going to bring so much brightness into your life. All these beautiful flowers and all these beautiful fruits and vegetables full of life. You can repeat that to yourself out loud or silently, or if you want to write it down for this full moon, for the next cycle that we are entering and what you are cultivating and harvesting in your life, aliveness. Only that which make you feel alive, vibrant, full of life. Only the best for myself. And I only offer my best to myself. And I only offer my best to those I love. I offer my best to life. Let your inhales be the vehicle for you to pull in, pull in all the strength that you need, all the clarity that you need, and all the fire that you need. To stay focused to stay open, let life fill you with each breath. And you can just ask with the breath, what do you need the most? Because I can't tell you. You ask yourself, what do I need the most? And let the inhale, let that breath of life, let spirit bring that into you and infuse every cell in your body with that which you need more than anything else in your life right now. Do you need more discernment? Do you need more discipline? Do you need more simplicity? Do you need more diligence? Do you need more relaxation? Do you need more letting go? What do you need the most? Just invite that in. And let your exhales be the vehicle, the tool for you to empty the tank. If you need more relaxation, you empty out the stress. You empty out the worry. You need more focus. You exhale out and you empty out the distractions. You need more discernment. You breathe out and exhale out any confusion and clarity. You need more love for yourself. You take a big sip of inhale for that. And you exhale any judgments that you have towards yourself. Any victim thinking that you have. Any limiting perceptions. You take a big sip of trust in God and spirit. Big, big, big gulp of spirit with every breath. And on the exhale, you empty the tank. 
any doubt. Just like we know the sun and the moon are going to oppose each other and it's going to be a full moon. And there's a beautiful orchestration behind this. You let this full moon illuminate your own divinity, your own knowingness that you are part of this divine plan of this orchestration. And everything is just perfect the way it is. Right here, right now. And that you know exactly what you need to do, what you need to let go of and what you need to call in in order to make the changes that only you know and feel that are right for you. Now on your next breath, take a deep inhale. And with your next exhale, send this breath right into the earth. Send your breath into Mother Earth. You can give the mother all of your worries, all of your concerns, and at the same time, offer your breath as an act of love, appreciation, and so much reverence. to this miracle that we live in, the Mother Earth that always takes care of us, that always provides us. And keep offering your gratitude, keep offering your reverence as you go about the next 24 hours, the rest of your life, of course, with this full moon, be immersed in that. Maybe take a walk. Go somewhere in nature. Go watch the sunrise if you can tomorrow morning. That will be an excellent thing to do. And offer your prayers. Offer your prayers as the sun rises. Offer your prayers for the entire world, for the world at large, for humanity. World, uh, prayers of peace. Prayers of unity. Prayers of coming back to our true divine nature. Offer your prayers and become a walking prayer for yourself and for everyone else. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, ladies. I think it's just ladies, I'm not gonna say gentlemen. Um, really appreciate your time. I'm gonna unmute all of you right now. So if you wanna say something and say goodbye, really appreciate you, thank you so much. And I'm gonna post the recording on the Facebook page you want to listen to it again or share it with your friends and have a wonderful wonderful weekend I love you all so thank much you. thank you thank you so thank much you. thank you thank you a lot bye bye